Let's talk about how to graph horizontal and vertical lines. I always thought these were a little complicated until I figured out for myself how to make sense of them. What I did is I started by just graphing some points. Uh, 3 is neg and negative 2, so x equals 3, y equals negative 2. 3, negative 1 would be 3, negative 1 here, 3, 0, that's an x-intercept. 3, 2, over 3, up 2. There's no reason I have to go in order. I can skip around a little bit. And 3, 5. When I graph those points, they make a vertical line. Like that, straight up and down. Vertical lines go straight up and down. Well, so I have to write an equation for this, and it, to me, they always seem a little confusing. I look at these points, every single x value is 3. So instead of trying to come up with like a y equals mx plus b equation or a point-slope equation, I'm looking at this and I just want to say x equals 3. That is the equation for the line. This is an equation. Is the equation for the line. And it's weird because it does look like it's an answer to some equation that we solved, but this is really how you describe this line. So whenever you see x equals something, it's going to be a vertical line that goes through that intercept. We'll practice those in a second. Now taking a look at the other situation, what happens when you keep the y the same? So I'm going to start with negative 4, 4. So I go back negative 4 and go up to 4. Negative 2, 4. Again, I'm just kind of bouncing around here. 0, 4. That's the intercept. 1, 4. And 5, 4. Well, here we get a horizontal line that's going through the y-intercept of 4. Well, and, then, and you look at the points, you can see that all the y's equal 4. So if I just write down what I'm looking at, y equals 4. This is the equation for a line. This is the equation for the line, y equals 4. So these can be confusing in the sense that they're kind of simple and straightforward, but they also don't really fit the pattern that we're used to when we say y equals mx plus b. And I can do some gymnastics and show you that they, maybe they do, but instead, let's just practice graphing these because you really just need to be able to do them. So I will start here. y equals negative 2. Let me zoom in on this a little bit. And these handouts are in the classroom if you are in my class. These are part of our class notes. And y equals negative 2. Well, how do you graph that? In many ways, it looks like it's just a point. It is the y-intercept is negative 2. But in the context, if they want you to graph a line, graph the line, in context, we're talking about the line where all the values of y will be negative 2, just like in that list we just did. If we're going to graph the line x equals negative 4, well, x equals negative 4, that's the, that's the intercept right there, but the line is going to go through all the values of x or all the values of y, where the x is held constant at negative 4. So that's going to be a vertical line. y equals 5. That's right here. And that is going to be a straight line where all the y's are 5. They're held constant at that level. The x's can change. And in class, we did six of these, so here's the other three. x equals negative 2. We did y equals negative 2 a second ago, but where x equals negative 2, that's the intercept. It is a straight up and down line. 
where all the values of x are negative 2, the y's can change. y equals 3, the line y equals 3. It does go through the point, that's the y-intercept, but the line is a horizontal line. All the x's are going to be 3 anywhere you pick along here, but the x's will change. Did I just say that backwards? All the y's are going to be 3, and the x's are going to change. x equals 5. You got to think about where you start. You start with the intercept. That's right here. If you drew the point on the x, then we are going up and down. We keeping the x constant and the y's change. That is the line x equals 5. I hope that was helpful. If you are interested in the whole playlist for the class, here it is. And if you are thinking about looking at some other algebra videos or whatever else, this other video might be interesting to you.